Hello everyone, this is Dave here from davestravelpages.com and this video is about what to look for in a long distance touring bike and why. There are several different styles of touring bike available depending on the type of terrain that you're going to be cycling on. This is by far the most popular design though. We could call this the classic or the traditional touring bike. As you can see, it looks very much like a road bike, but there are some subtle differences and we'll go through those in a bit. This bike is designed to stick mainly to sealed roads and it's also designed to carry the weight of the baggage that you'll need on a bike tour. This particular bike is from Stanforth and it's called a Skylander and I think it's a good example to use for this video. So I think what I'll do is I'll go through this bike from top to bottom and point out the features that I think you should keep an eye out for if you're considering buying a touring bike of your own. Uh, we'll start off with the saddle and actually if you are thinking of buying a touring bike you don't need to wait until you've spent two grand on a bike before you can test out a saddle. This particular one is a Brooks C17 Cambium saddle. Uh, this is an organic material saddle, um, a non-leather one. I have reviewed it and I'm going to leave a link below. I didn't actually get on with this saddle. I am trying still though, but after 600 kilometers I have to say that it's, uh, it's not my favorite. And uh, I think that goes to prove that it's a good idea to test out your saddle before you hit the road on a bike tour. Uh, for me, that my preference is the B17 leather saddle. But there we go. So I think you should pay attention to your saddle because that is your primary contact point with the bike. And some people sort of say, well, I don't really want to spend 100 or 200 bucks on a, on a saddle, but really it's worth it in the end. Trust me on this one, it's worth it. Uh, moving along then, we've got the handlebars. And as you can see, these handlebars are drop handlebars. And this is very uh, common on this sort of road touring bike. And what it does is it gives your hands several different grip positions. You can ride with your hands here. You can ride with your hands here on the hood. And you can also ride with your hands on the curled part of the handlebar. Now to be fair, on a bike tour, I think that's the least likely um, used position, uh, just the way it is really. But um, so these handlebars offer a degree of aerodynamics but to be fair by the time you've got a load of bags on um, it doesn't really matter about the aerodynamics in the end but it does feel like you're going fast I have to say. Um, so that's the, the handlebars. Then we come to the stem. This particular bike has got a quill stem and I actually like a quill stem on this type of touring bike because it means it's very easy to uh, alter the height of the handlebars. All you need to do is just turn this, move it up or down and then turn it to tighten it again. Very simple. Uh, with the other type of um, handlebar stem, it's not, it's not as easy as that. Uh, you, ex this is just hanging off because it's um, part of the handlebar bag setup. So you can ignore that. Uh, then we come to the brakes. I do actually like these, these are quite nifty brakes here. Uh, so these are the brakes on the front. Some people choose to have uh, combined brakes and gear shifters. Uh, I don't think that's a good idea on a, a touring bike in the long run. Uh, the reason being I've used those sorts of uh, gears twice now on a bike tour and they've failed both times. And in the end, I always end up with a dollar shifter, which gets me out of trouble. So I would avoid the STI shifters. And this bike has done that and it's got these bar end shifters. And these are sort of basic and functional, really easy to repair. Anyone's going to be able to fix it if it's, uh, you know, if your wire snaps or, or anything like that. So bar end shifters, I think, are the way forward for a touring bike of this type. Uh, next, we have the top tube. Now, this frame is a steel frame, and we'll go down and have a look there. As you can see, it's got the Reynolds steel um, sticker there. And this top tube, one of the differences between this and a road bike is this top tube's a bit longer. And what that's going to do is it's going to give the rider a more upright position, but also it's going to provide a sort of overall room. And as we work our way down uh, the bike, you'll see that uh, that's, that's quite important. So that's the top tube. Uh, I guess the next point would here would be the rack. Uh, you can have racks on the back, and this one, you can also put a rack on the front, but I, just, I, I didn't need it on my last tour, so there was no point in having an empty rack, so I just uh, took the rack off. And on the racks, you're going to have the panniers, and the panniers are going to be the things that carry your, your gear for the bike tour. Uh, we'll come down some more. I think we'll, we'll carry on on the back. As you can see, the brakes here, uh, they've got some rather neat looking cantilever brakes here. Now, on a bike like this, um, I, I think there is a reasonably good argument for disc brakes. Now, I'm not a big disc brake fan for a bike tour, but for this type of cycling, where you're predominantly going to be on the road, 
and most likely than not you're going to be in a developed country. I think maybe there is a good uh, case for disc brakes. My, the thing that I've got against them is that I think that the marginal gains that they provide, I think that the potential problems outweigh those marginal gains, which is why I'm against them. And these cantilever brakes are absolutely fine. I mean, I've been going up and down mountains for the last month and haven't had a problem. So, and that's all that matters really. So we've got cantilevers at the back there and cantilevers at the front as well. Moving down, um, the next thing is going to be your choice of tyre. Uh, Schwalb or Schwalbe, I've never been too sure how to pronounce it, have kind of become the standard uh, tyre for bike touring. Um, they're puncture resistant and they seem to last for thousands of miles. I think my record was to get about 5,000 miles out of one of them, but other people have done much further, so I recommend those. Uh, the next thing is going to be a strong rim. I believe this rim is a Rigida. Um, I could probably I probably got the sticker the wrong way around. Anyway, this I believe it's a Rigida rim. And the rim strength and the spokes are going to add to the wheel strength. Now, this is very important for bike touring. So I believe that this is a 36-spoke wheel, and that's going to provide the strength needed um, to carry the weight of the, of the rider and also the bags that are being carried as well. I have seen people, um, when they've gone on a bike tour and they've just taken their regular road bike on tour with their... I don't know, it seems to me that they've only got about 12 spokes on the wheel and inevitably they always break a spoke. Now, this is not to say that you'll never break a spoke, but uh, you know, you can plan ahead and get a, a well-built, uh, a hand-built wheel and it will do the job and last you. So we carry on down. Uh, we have the rear cassette here. This is a nine-speed uh, bike. And again, most, uh, most touring bikes are nine-speed. You have the nine-speed cassette at the front and we have... I don't know if you can see the three, three there. So that gives you, if my maths is correct, I think that gives you 27 gears. That's amazing, isn't it? And another thing here, the chainstay, this is slightly longer. So what's happened here is we've got a longer top tube and we've got a longer chainstay. And what that means is that um, with more room on the bike, when your foot is on the pedal here, it's not going to hit a bag which hangs down on this section here. So as you're cycling, if you're on a bike that's not been designed very well, um, you could find that on the back pedal, you're going to catch your bags, which on a bike tour is going to be quite annoying after a while. So that's, that's basically the fundamental difference uh, between sort of this design bike and a road bike. Um, firstly, it's a steel frame, uh, but secondly, it's the geometry. It just gives you that little bit uh, of extra room so that you don't catch the bags as you're cycling. Uh, so what else do we have? So you're going to need a good bottom bracket. This particular bike has got Dior XT uh, components, which again I think are reasonably standard on kind of medium to upper end touring bikes of this type. The reason being they just last and last. Um, on the bike, you can see here we've got some water bottle holders. One, two, and I think, yeah, you can get a third one under there. I try not to use the third one. In fact, most people tend to use the third one to store their fuel bottle if they're running a petrol stove uh, because what happens is this uh, bottom bottle just gets covered in dirt as you're cycling. Um, but, uh, but yeah, again, a, a frame that where you can hold water and bottles is, uh, is good on a bike tour. And as I move over, I'm going to point out here. So you can see that uh, you can see these points here. Now, these will be fixing points for your rack. Now this bike again, as I said, it's been specifically designed for bike touring. Um, so this is far better than trying to kind of uh, attach a rack to a bike that it isn't designed for it. So that's again something, that's a key element really, in my opinion, to look out for on a touring bike. And what else have we got down here? And we've got the hub. And some people might replace that for a dynamo hub um, so that they could charge their gear. Uh, but uh, yeah, in this case, it's just the standard hub. So I think that's all you need to know about a bike, really, for a bike tour. So I think the key elements or the key takeaways from that are get yourself a comfortable seat, which is kind of a no-brainer, really. I would say make sure that the frame is designed for your um, body uh, size. Um, definitely make sure that there's enough uh, foot room between the pedal and the rear rack so that you've got clearance between your foot and the bag. Make sure it's got some sort of eyelet so that you can... Um, you can attach a rack to the frame. 
I much prefer these bar end shifters than STI shifters. I think that's another thing to look out for. Uh, steel frame, um, I'm a big steel frame fan. I mean, th there's a reason why the majority of bikes of this design are a steel frame, and that's because they're much more reliable. And people can argue the case for aluminium, and that, that's fine if you, you know, if you feel so inclined, get an aluminium one. But uh, st steel's standard for a reason. And like I said, I think this quill stem is also a good thing to look for if possible, but it's not a deal breaker if you can't. And basically, that's what to look for in a long distance touring bike. Uh, if you've got any questions or any comments, please leave them below. A thumbs up and like the video, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers for now.